Most uh, contemporary liberals, perhaps all of them, uh, have uh, forgotten the original meaning of natural rights and have become much more interested in uh, equalizing for the sake of equalizing. Welcome to the American Mind. Mark Blitz was once described by our mutual friend and teacher, Harvey Mansfield, as brainy. That may sound like an odd compliment, almost superfluous, coming from a professor and about another professor. But if so, you don't know as many professors as I do, among whom Blitz stands out. He, is the, he teaches philosophy at Claremont McKenna College, where he is also director of the Henry Salvatore Center. Blitz has written on Plato and Heidegger, among others, but has also had practical experience and political responsibility as the associate director of the United States Information Agency under Ronald Reagan and as vice president of the Hudson Institute. Mark Blitz's most recent book, Conserving Liberty, is a small volume, only 115 pages of text, but about some large ideas concerning American liberalism and conservatism. Mark, welcome. Thank you, Charles. Um, your book is called Conserving Liberty, and it argues for what you call conservative liberalism. Why devote a book to an oxymoron? <laughs> Well, the key thing for me is to uh, understand the proper principles of conservatism so that conservatives understand what it is we're attempting to conserve. <clears throat> and what we're attempting to conserve, in my judgment, in the United States um, is a country that is founded on the principles of equal natural rights. Uh, discussed in the Declaration of Independence, discussed in John Locke. So the true thing that we're attempting to conserve and should be attempting to conserve is individual natural liberty, hence conserving liberty. And why, why doesn't contemporary liberalism uh, devote itself to conserving liberalism, understood even as Jeffersonian? Liberalism. Well, I think most uh, contemporary liberals, perhaps all of them, uh, have uh, forgotten the original meaning of natural rights. They don't believe that there are any natural truths. They've forgotten the uh, ground of our country on individual rights, individual authority, individual judgment, and have become much more interested in uh, equalizing for the sake of equalizing. So that what it is that uh, contemporary liberals or progressives are about uh, is really no longer sufficiently the true grounds of uh, the country and therefore also the way in which our institutions, self-governing, character, uh, all connect to that. What, what do you think the strongest argument um, among contemporary liberal thinkers is against this original liberalism that you're trying to recover? Well, I think uh, in theoretical terms, their strongest argument is the attempt to say <clears throat> that there are no such things as natural rights, that you can't show uh, rationally mm -hmm. uh, that human beings each have equal individual liberty, that that's merely an assumption or an historical judgment or relative or changeable. I think that argument is incorrect, but it's a consequence in contemporary liberals of arguments made theoretically uh, more or less from the 19th century on. In practical terms, I don't believe they do have a particularly strong argument of, uh, of any sort. I mean, they can look at what appears to them to be uh, of a width and breadth and height of inequality in substantive terms, which is unattractive. But even that inequality is grounded on this enormous increase for everyone in material well-being um, and, and material wealth. So the best argument that they have is a theoretical argument, but I think an untrue argument. So, uh, but those are old arguments, you'd have to say, those liberal arguments. I mean, they go back 100 years or more than 100 years now. Uh, uh, what about, uh, uh, are those still the strongest? I mean, it's, 
it seems to be a refutation of progress, uh, not, not to mention progressivism, if, if that's the best they can do, still after all these years. A lot of these arguments uh, depend on mistaking the meaning of equality, forgetting that the mm -hmm. ground of equality in the United States is equal rights. Equal rights can lead to unequal outcomes. Equal rights depend on uh, uh, character and institutions that one might always, not always see working at their best. But equality does not mean equality of results. It's ultimately grounded in equal rights. Well, one of the nice phrases uh, in your book is, quote, uh, the backward glance must produce the cutting edge. So we, we need a kind of uh, thoughtful return uh, you argue, in order to recover the future of, uh, of America and of American conservatism. Is it, um, but in the age of the internet, is it uh, plausible to look backward? Uh, is it, can you persuade people that, um, contrary to scientific progress, always looking forward, that you could find truth in the past or truth somewhere besides ahead of us? Well, the, the, the backward glance is toward what are permanent truths. Uh, the argument uh, grounding uh, equal natural rights is meant to be and is, I think, a permanent truth. It's not the whole mm -hmm. truth about human things, but it is a truth about human things. It's not subject uh, to change. It's not subject to progress in its truth. It's not subject to regress in its truth. It's the true, but in that sense, always radical ground mm -hmm. uh, of American political life. So in principle, there's no reason why one couldn't once more consider actively uh, the manner in which equal natural rights are the basis of our country. What one requires ultimately is good education. That's a hard thing to come by, <laughs> <laughs> but it's not impossible. If conservatism is nothing but the older liberalism, why call it conservatism? Or what, what, is, what about this other quality, which you sometimes do mention, conservative modesty, uh, a kind of realism about uh, the possibilities of changing human arrangements and, uh, and even a kind of defense of the familiar and the old? Right. The principles ultimately are radical. They're radical because uh, they are, they're naturally true principles. And that's correct even about the things that natural rights liberalism doesn't as such talk so much about, mm -hmm. namely natural excellence, what you ought to choose. These things are radical, but precisely because one understands them or attempts to understand them in their truth, natural mm -hmm. principles, one also sees the difficulties in implementing them fully. One has a judgment about uh, the necessary imperfections of human choice and human activities. But it's exactly if you really understand the root and meaning of true principles that one sees where they're applicable and where they're not 100% applicable, mm -hmm. but only somewhat applicable. Those uh, rights are self-evident, you think. How, and how do we know that? <laughs> <laughs> self-evident. I, in this case, I think, in the, in the sense that Jefferson means it, let's say, uh, I think means that if you look at yourself, you understand that you have an authority to choose, to reflect, to prefer, ultimately perhaps to act, which can't be taken away. It can be covered over, it can be occluded, mm -hmm. but it's something which when you look at yourself, you see is there. It's self-evident if you look clearly. And what, you say these, are, these are, are truths, and you affirm that strongly um, in the book, but they're not the whole truth. And so one wonders, would, uh, would earlier conservative thinkers, you mentioned Aristotle, for example, have uh, agreed that there are natural rights in the sense in which you defend them? I can't speak for Aristotle. <laughs> but you do all the yeah, time. Presumptuous as we all are. <laughs> presumptuous as we all Come are. On. <laughs> Who's going to speak for Aristotle? I would say this. Uh, Aristotle would look at our circumstances, would understand uh, the merits and benefits of individual rights. I think would worry in particular, however, about uh, the loss of virtue mm -hmm. and worry as well about the question of the proper or excellent use of your rights. It seems to me that those would be his his major concerns. I think he could also see, however, if one laid it all out, 
that an argument based on individual rights, hence on responsibility and character, is much more significant in protecting what is high and protecting what is good than progressive liberalism mm -hmm. is. So I think Aristotle would be on our side. <laughs> yes, Aristotle's concerns sound like conservative concerns yes. as you argue for them. Yes, exactly right. So therefore, I will presume to speak for Aristotle. <laughs> I thought you'd get around to that. <laughs> yes, of course. He's an ally. He must be. <laughs> Thank you.